What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Hooper's Beta. Today I'm going to talk to you about Climber's Elbow. This is a follow-up video on a video we previously did from a user question. Okay, the reason I want to do this video again is to go a little bit more in depth with it, as well as to improve the production quality. So, what is Climber's Elbow? Climber's Elbow is a tendinopathy at the common flexor tendon or the medial epicondyle or just the inside of your elbow, okay? So that's where you get all these flexor muscles going through that help particularly with climbing. So a tendinopathy is any kind of degeneration or issue at the tendon, okay? It's similar to a tendinitis, but technically like a tendinitis is an acute stage of a condition, it's the inflammatory stage of it, okay? So if you've had this for more than a week or so, it's more likely a tendinopathy. Climber's elbow can be kind of complicated just because there are so many different muscles that attach at this point. So we have different muscles that will run down to the outside or the inside of your wrist that run all the way through the fingers, etc. So you know, having a proper diagnosis by a professional can help expedite your healing process so you're training the right muscle, you're trying to heal the right muscle, okay? We talked briefly in another video about treatment and I mentioned, you know, one version is rest, so you're just basically trying to decrease the irritation at that area. The other option is to strengthen. So oftentimes these tendinopathies occur because we're working at our max capacity for muscle. So we're climbing, we're getting stronger at our sport, but we're pushing it to its brink, to its work capacity every time we climb. So eventually you go to that brink, you go to that brink, and it starts to break down faster than it can heal and recover. So again, we can rest, so that way we're taking away some of that, that insult to it, or we get stronger so that our capacity for that is not hit every single time. You'll also probably notice you're getting to be stronger with your climbing because you're working on that strength. So we talked about you know, some eccentrics and holds. Now why are those two aspects important? The hold while you're doing the exercise is really important because as you've gone past that first acute inflammatory stage, we're actually getting you know, water that's accumulated in that area and that's a lot of time what's just causing our pain. So when we squeeze and contract and hold, we're actually gonna push some of that out of the area and it should actually feel better. Like it might feel like a little bit uncomfortable at first and then that pain will decrease. The eccentric, so the lengthening aspect of it, we want that to be slow over about five seconds. That's what applies that good stress to that tendon to trigger the body to make it stronger. Okay, so we'll go over a few exercises as well with that in different positions that you can work on. Um, what else can you do with this? So sometimes you're like, well, I don't wanna just do that. I wanna do more. I wanna get rid of this as quickly as possible. So you can do other things with it, like cupping or myofascial decompression. I'm a big fan of if you have a cupping set or seek out a professional who can help show you how to do it. You can even do some of your own self-massage or even some ice massage on it. Again, this is not likely like an acute inflammatory condition, so you don't need to just be icing, icing, icing. But if you take an ice cube and you rub it along that area with some pressure, you're getting a massage and you're getting icing. Two for one can help speed up that healing process. The big thing though we want to think about is with prevention. So we talked about already how this is like a work capacity issue. So before you start having pain in your elbow, you want to strengthen that area. You need a cross train. So if you get these exercises in before you have an issue, you can potentially avoid having that irritation and that issue and you won't even have to deal with it. So I hope you learned a lot from this video about climber's elbow and how to prevent it, how to get stronger, and we'll go over those exercises at the end as well, so that way you have some ideas of what you should be doing. Happy climbing. All right, so here's one of these exercises that we can work on. So we're set up so our forearm is stable, we have our weight, we're gonna flex that wrist up till we get to about that end range. We're gonna hold for that five seconds, and then we're gonna slowly lower down again at about a five second count. Now for a little added bonus, you can extend, let that weight fall all the way down. Now you're working in different muscle groups. So you have to be careful um, if you have too much weight because it may feel harder as you get to that bottom. So then we come back up, hold. Now be careful because you might wanna like turn that weight in or out, try and keep it neutral unless you know specifically what muscle you're working on. Hold, slowly lower it back down. And then again, if you can, rolling it down to those fingers to work those additional muscle groups. Just be careful, make sure that does not hurt. 
Okay, so now we're going to demonstrate um, a two-handed position so we can work these flexors equally. Now we're going to start again with our forearms stabilized on the bench. We're going to pull up till we get that full flexion. We're holding for that five seconds. And then we slowly rotate that back down. Again, we can let this go all the way down to the fingertips for an added bonus as we pull back up. Now the benefit of using the bar here is it actually it kind of forces your position to be neutral for the wrist. So you're not getting that like side to side deviation that you may get with a single weight. So that can be better for your initial control if you don't feel like you have equal control on both hands. Okay, this last one we're gonna show where I'm gonna be in a standing position now. So now our forearms are not supported. This is gonna work more in an open chain position. And what it's also gonna help us do is to incorporate the biceps as well, because those are used when we're climbing. So we come to the top of our movement, and then we slowly come down again with that eccentric. Now you may notice in my hand position, I'm keeping my thumb underneath the bar. So that way I work more of my finger flexors. If I come over top here, then that changes the exercise pretty significantly because now I'm actually using a different muscle, my brachioradialis more, which is not what we're targeting. So thumb under the bar, pulling up, and slowly letting it come back down. Now you'll feel this in the bicep and the forearms, especially if you have good control going throughout the motion. All right, ready? That, that's okay, yeah. Elbow, I, should, I don't like the um. Um, 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 um. Can you do it one more time? No. I don't know, you could actually see me. I'm at that point, like, should I take a break? Moving on. That was bad.